Turn your box. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello students. Turn your box to page 12, I think. Reading. Page 12, yes. Animal partners. Let's do the reading. Then after that, we'll discuss it together. Let's follow me, please, while reading, while listening to the article. We'll discuss it together again. If you have questions, you can ask me later, inshallah. Let's listen. Here we have a general question. Do you think animals ever from partnership to help one another? Explain. Let's see the story first. Animal partners. For animals in the wild, each day is a struggle to survive. They must continually search for food while at the same time keeping themselves safe from predators. Some animals have learned that teaming up with another animal makes the struggle to find food, shelter, and safety a bit easier. This kind of special relationship in which animals depend upon and benefit from one another is called symbiosis. One of the most visually surprising examples of symbiosis occurs between the fearsome African crocodile and the small plover bird. When a plover is nearby, a crocodile will open its long, sharp-toothed jaws to invite it inside. You might assume that the plover would quickly reject this invitation and fly off. Yet surprisingly, the plover does hop inside. Perhaps even more amazingly, the crocodile, normally known for its aggression, does not snap its mouth shut and have the plover for a snack. Instead, it remains still not closing its mouth until the plover leaves. How can this strange behavior be explained? The answer is symbiosis. The plover picks out all the small pieces of meat stuck between the crocodile's teeth. In doing so, it cleans the crocodile's teeth, which prevents it from getting infections. Because the crocodile cannot clean its own teeth, it depends on the plover to perform this service. In return, the crocodile provides an easy meal for the plover. You see here, symposis, huh? This is the relationship between the, uh, the crocodile and the plover. As you see here from the picture, the, uh, this bird jumped inside the crocodile's mouth and, began to, and begins to, to uh, clean the teeth of the crocodile. So he gets the food and the crocodile gets the benefits of cleaning his teeth. Okay, let's see another relationship between two animals. Let's continue. In some cases of symbiosis, like the crocodile and the plover, each animal in the pair benefits from their relationship in a different way. However, in other cases, the animals share a common goal. This is true of the honey guide bird and the ratel, a furry creature with short legs and long claws. Both these animals live on grasslands in Africa and have an appetite for honey. As its name suggests, the honey guide has a special ability for locating beehives. However, this small bird cannot open a beehive to get at the honey. To accomplish this, it teams up with the radel. Radels are a perfect match for the honey guide, as they love honey, are large enough to crack open a hive, but have no ability to find hives themselves. The honey guide flies over grasslands, looking for a hive. When it does spot a hive, it swoops down and makes a noise to alert the radel. The radel uses its claws to tear open the hive. After eating its fill, the radle invites the honey guide to finish the leftovers. Another two animals that team up to see compensate here. for their own... See here, you have uh, the relationship here between uh, symbiosis, uh, between uh, uh, what is it? Hmm? 
rattle and the honey guide. Huh? Both of them, they like honey. One of them can't open the, uh, the hive. So he used the rattle to open it. He eat it, he find the hive, the honey guide find the hive, uh, ask the rattle to open the hive. He opened the hive, then the honey guide eats, and the leftover will eat it, will be eaten by the rattle. So here another relationship between the two animals. Let's, let's, let's continue, let's continue. Weaknesses are the zebra and the ostrich. These two animals often travel together. This is no surprise since they are a perfect match. While the giant flightless ostrich has poor senses of both smell and hearing, the zebra has acute senses of smell and hearing. On the other hand, the zebra has terrible eyesight, while the ostrich has excellent eyesight, enhanced by its long neck, which enables the ostrich to see far into the distance. In this way, each makes up for the other's deficiencies. As a result, the animals are far safer together than they would be apart. Ostriches can see predators, such as lions, far in the distance, while zebras can smell or hear others as they approach. This Birds and land animals. You see here we have the relationship between an ostrich and a zebra. The, ze the ostrich can see has a long foresight and uh, the zebra can hear. So they together, they match together in order to save themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue. Animals aren't the only ones that work in symbiotic pairs. Some sea animals like the clownfish and the sea anemone do as well. Sea anemones, which look like plants, are actually dangerous animals with poisonous tentacles. Most fish stay away from anemones to a... Here we have uh, an anemone. We have tentacles. This, this is it. And this is the fish. Huh? Look at the uh, relationship. Let's see. Anemone. Yeah. Let's continue. Avoid being stung. However, the clownfish makes its home among sea anemones. It does not get stung because its body is protected by a special coating. Living among the deadly tentacles of an anemone has a clear advantage. Most predators stay away. Another benefit for the clownfish is that it is able to eat the anemone's leftover bits of food. But what is the advantage to the anemone? There are several. First, the brightly colored clownfish attracts predators. When the clownfish swims under the anemone's tentacles to safety, if the predator follows, the anemone has the chance to sting and eat it. Other services the clownfish performs are cleaning up food scraps and dead anemone tentacles and chasing away fish that might eat the anemone. While many Continue. symbiotic pairs may first look like odd partners, the benefits they provide one another are invaluable and may make the difference between life and death. In fact, it is often these animals' very differences that make them perfect partners. You see here we have uh, the relationship here between uh, animals and it is a uh, relationship which is uh, for both. They both can take advantage from each other. Okay, let's go on to the questions. Hmm. Explain the, the meaning of symbiosis. Hmm? What do you think? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, relationship, huh? 
is a relationship in which two animals depend upon and benefit from one another. Good. In what way do the African crocodile and the plover have a symbiotic relationship? We said that, huh? One of them eat the leftovers in the teeth, huh? The plover cleans the crocodile's teeth, which prevents infection and provides a meal for the plover. Give an example of a case of symbiosis uh, in which each animal has the same goal, the same, they, ha they want honey, both have the same goal, they want to eat honey, but one of them can find and the other can break the hive. The honey guide, the honey guide bird and the rattle, each other get honey. The honey guide bird finds the hive and the rattle tears it open, open, tears it open. So. Uh, number four, name two animals that make up for each other deficiencies. Deficiencies and nuqsan. One of them have two uh, One of them has another deficiency, the, the, the ostrich and the uh, zebra. One of them can see and the other can hear. Uh, how do they do this? The zebra can uh, has a bad eyesight but good senses of smell and hearing. The ostrich has poor senses of smell and hearing but good eyesight. So. They compensate each other. Uh, what benefits do the clownfish and uh, anemone uh, offer each other? Yes, and he safety here. Huh? One of them gives the food, brings the food, and the other uh, uh, takes safety, and even sometimes eat food leftovers. Hmm? Yes. The anemone provides uh, a safe home for the clown fish and leftover food. Uh, the clown fish attracts prey for the anemone, uh, cleans up food, scraps and dead tentacles, uh, and chases away f uh, fish that eat anemone. Okay, by this we finish our lesson, but remember, to do our workbook, please, page uh, five and six, and photocopy them and send them to me on the my WhatsApp. Okay, to know that you have done the homework. See you inshallah in our next lesson. Thank you for listening, guys.